I'll talk a little bit about what I do and then a little bit about how I got there from you know, school and then close with a little video that I find inspiring and I hope you will too. So my company makes electric powertrains for trucks and buses. And this is, I'm not good at sound bites, but this is the sound bite I came up with on live TV once. You know, imagine if Cummins came out and said, you know, we've made a powertrain for trucks that's 60% uh, more fuel efficient and saves even more emissions than that. Um, wouldn't that change the world? So that is what we've done. Um, that's only true in certain cases. It, you'll save that much fuel in, in garbage trucks and in buses, uh, not in cars, not in long haul. So why do we do garbage trucks? Well, because they're really bad. Um, the same engine that would do six and a half miles per gallon in a long haul truck will do about two and a half in a garbage truck. And they chew up the brakes in three months. They're just massively inefficient. They burn 14,000 gallons a year. And we can save 60% of the fuel and all the brakes. That's why we do it. Um, same story with buses. They're not quite as bad, uh, but you get similar gains. That's our first garbage truck. Um, that one's actually a repower. It was built in 2007. We, we just put our powertrain in it and demonstrated it up, up in uh, Sonoma County. Um, the thing that strikes everyone is how fantastically quiet they are. Um, might have to buy an alarm clock. Um, our first customer for buses, in fact, the people that persuaded us to do buses, is actually in New Zealand. So these are the Wellington City trolley buses. They, they're electric, but they run on these overhead wires. And those wires are about to be taken down. So the city was going to have these replaced with diesel buses, and nobody wanted that. So we're actually converting them um, to our powertrain. And so they'll still be electric, but they won't need the wires. Um, just so you know, it's not all you know, PowerPoint. Uh, this is not a great photo, but the big red blob and the thing over there, that is the engine and transmission out of a Mack garbage truck in the US. It weighs 1,640 kilograms, and it makes about 240 kilowatts. This thing on the floor in front of it is two of our electric motors with transmissions. It, it weighs about an eighth as much and makes twice the power. And we put two of those in the garbage truck. It's not, it's not straight electric. We have an onboard range extender, a generator engine, and we've chosen to use a gas turbine engine for that. So there's one of our engines running on the test stand. And you can tell it's running because the hot section is actually glowing in the daylight. That's how they run. Uh, why do we use a turbine? A lot of good reasons, but this is perhaps the most important one. That's what a diesel flame looks like. It's full of incandescent soot particles, and they don't all get burned before they go out the exhaust. And that's what the flame looks like in a turbine combustor. There's no incandescent soot. It's very clean, it's very cool, it's very lean, and the emissions are so low that you can meet California emissions without using any after-treatment. Um, I know there's a few students in the audience, um, which reminds me of when I went to school. I never did my homework. Um, I went to university, studied electrical engineering. I didn't finish my degree. Uh, I've never been very obedient about these things. <laughs> I didn't finish my degree because I was, by that time, running an engineering development project, and I was doing 60 hours a week on that. And I really couldn't do both things, and something had to go. So I, I never did finish the degree. I did go on and do lots of interesting engineering projects in all sorts of different disciplines. The um, very first one I did was actually build a radio station here in Auckland, Radio Pacific, back in uh, the 1970s. And I've built networking equipment. I was a co-founder of Tesla. Then I'm doing right speed. Um, I've always been curious. and. I've always loved to build things, and I've always been fascinated by how things work, not just for the, you know, just the pure knowledge of how things work, but how to, how to build them, and how to build them better, and how to make them work better. And I've just followed that wherever it's gone. So I've worked in lots of different technologies, 20 years building networking products, and then you know, a couple of my crazy neighbors persuaded me to help them start Tesla. So then I had to learn about automotive stuff. And then you know, now I didn't even set out 
to build turbine engines, and now I know something about how you design and build turbine engines, which is really cool. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun. Um, about a year ago, we moved the company from San Jose up to an abandoned aircraft hangar on the old Naval Air Station in Alameda, which is in the East Bay, San Francisco Bay. Uh, building had been derelict for, for 20 years. It's a wonderful old building. Um, we had to refurbish it before we could use it. We put about a year and a half and $4 million into the building. And as part of that, we had a videographer come around and take a few photos and a bit of video just so we'd remember what it was like. And I didn't even know he was doing this, but one day he was chatting to one of the shop technicians, a guy called George, who's a fantastic welder. He's a really, really good welder, and he's a good fabricator. But he's the last guy on my team that would have stood up in front of a video camera and asked to explain to people you know, something about the company. And so when I saw this video that they put together, I was just blown away. Uh, and I find it immensely inspiring, and I hope you will too. George Russell, I'm a welder fabricator, a problem solver to a point. Building, uh, it was finished in 44. It closed down in 97, and it's been kind of sitting almost empty since then. And now we're in the process of trying to put it all back together and get it functional again. Down in San Jose, the, it's really an office building. It's small. The roofs aren't as high as we need to lift up these kind of big vehicles. It's been a creative shuffling of space and kind of keeping everything real compact as possible. Here, it's, you know, there's a big bunch of room. We can drive a truck in without having to disassemble it just to do work on it. Some of the challenges of, with the building is the age of the building. The pipes that are needed to be tapped into to use still, and when you go to take them apart, they just crumble. We're putting all new lights in and just trying to get it off. Everything's rusted together being so close to the bay. Probably within like three to four weeks, a lot of it's going to come together quickly. There's always that, it looks like it's just a mess, and then over the course of a week, it really starts to come together. Chaos, and then all of a sudden, order. And I just want to be able to come to work and get to work, and not be chasing down all the problems. I want to focus back on what I do, which is making things. I like actually putting the truck together, it's sitting there and, okay, I need to make a bracket. I'll make it this way. And then once I make the bracket, I can go to somebody that's uh, got structural engineering background, because I don't, and say, where would you find the weakest point where it's going to crack and break? And they'd give me tips, and I'd go back and I'd remodify it to be that much stronger and better. And just working back and forth, putting things on the truck. And I really enjoy that, having the freedom to create. Edison was sitting in his garage, tinkering some wire and glass and gases, made light. In a sense, we're kind of doing the same kind of thing. We're making something new, and that's really kind of neat to be part of that. I can't wait for the day when I'm sitting there driving along in traffic and look to the side and I made that. That's my handiwork right there. You know, my hands physically were on that truck and that one and that one and that one. And that's the part where I'll actually feel more accomplishment is seeing it done. Right now in the making of it, it's, it's still too close to see that. My name is George Russell. I am welder fabricator. I work at Wright Speed. <laughs> 